Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 51 Access Modifiers for Types. If you haven't watched parts 48, 49, and 50, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with this session. In this session, we'll be learning about the access modifiers that can be applied for types themselves. In the previous session, we have learned the different modifiers that can be applied for type members. Now, we know that in C Sharp, there are five different access modifiers. And from the previous sessions, we have already understood all these five different access modifiers can be applied for type members. But when it comes to types, you can only use public and internal access modifiers with types. Trying to use any other access modifier will generate a compiler error. Let's look at an example. And in order to understand internal and public access modifiers properly, we need two, you know, two assemblies. Okay, so let's add two class library projects to the solution. And to do that, right click on the solution, add and select new project. Select Visual C Sharp as your programming language. And let's select class library as the project type. And I'm going to name this as assembly one project. Click OK. That should create that project. Let's add another project. I'm going to call this assembly two project. click OK and it should create another project. Now, within assembly 1 in class1.cs file, I'm going to create a class called assembly1 class. And within this class, I'm going to have a print method, so public void print method. And what this method does? It just prints a message onto the console, so console dot right line. Hello. All right. So if you look at this code, we have this class, and this class access modifier is public. And from the slide, we understood that, you know, with types, you can only use internal or public access modifiers. What happens if I use any other access modifiers? For example, what happens if I use private access modifier on the type? If I do that, and if I try to build the solution, look at what happens. We will get a compiler error. And look at the error. It says elements defined in a namespace cannot be explicitly declared as private, protected, or protected internal. Now, what do we mean by elements defined in a namespace? Now, what are the different elements that can be defined within a namespace? We can define a class, we can define a structure, we can define an interface, delegates, etc. So, all these are examples of types. Okay, so types can only have internal or public access modifiers. Trying to use any other access modifier will give you a compiler error. So, if I convert this back to public, we will get no compiler error. So if I build this Control shift b shortcut for building a solution, on the status bar, you can see build succeeded. So you can use public access modifier. Now, what do we mean by public? If you mark a, a type as public, then obviously it will be available anywhere, no restrictions whatsoever. All right. Now let's try to access this class, which is present in assembly 1, in assembly 2 project. Okay, and obviously to do that in assembly 2 project, we need to add a reference to assembly 1 project. Okay, and to do that, just open the references folder, right click on that, add reference, select assembly 1 project from the list, click OK, and you should see assembly 1 being added there. Okay, so now let's go to class1.cs file of assembly 2 project, get rid of this unnecessary using statements which we don't use. I'm going to call this class as assembly2 class so that the names will be clear. So within this assembly2 class, let's have another method, public void test. And within this method, I'm going to create an instance of this class, assembly1 class. And to do that, assembly1. Can you see that? You, you, you see the namespace, but not the class. So assembly1 dot assembly1 class. You can either use the fully qualified name or you can actually use 
the using statement so using assembly one so assembly one class and let's call it as instance is equal to new assembly one class and on the instance I can invoke the print method so now I am able to access the type that is defined in assembly one in assembly two okay why because that's public that's accessible anywhere no restrictions whatsoever so now if I build the solution we get no compiler errors so you see on the status bar build succeeded okay now let's go back to class1.cs file of assembly1 instead of public let's use internal access modifier now all I did here is change the access modifier from public to internal now we know that if a member is internal then it will be available only in the containing assembly and the same is the true even for types if you mark a type as internal then that type is available only within that assembly where it's defined trying to access that type outside of that assembly will generate a compiler error now we are using this assembly one class which is internal and which is present in assembly one project in assembly two and look at that we already have that red squiggly lines indicating you know some sort of error okay so if I try to build that solution we should get about four errors and all of them look at that assembly one dot assembly one class is an accessible due to its protection level which is very clear that you are not allowed to access that particular class outside of assembly one so any internal member or a type defined as you know within an assembly can be only accessed within that assembly trying to access that outside of the assembly will generate a compiler error now to get rid of those errors all you need to do is make it public since public member is accessible anywhere and if I try to build this now all those errors should have gone and build succeeded now let's do another thing let's delete the access modifier altogether now I am not having any access modifier whatsoever so then what is going to be the access modifier now for types if you don't specify an access modifier the default will be internal okay so if I build the solution now we again get those four errors because why if you don't specify the access modifier for types the default will be internal but on the other hand if you don't specify an access modifier for a type member then it will be private in fact this is actually an interview question they will ask you in general in an interview okay what is the default access modifier for a type member in private what is the default access modifier for types if you don't specify one internal okay so just keep in mind type members can have all of the access modifiers whereas types can only have two access modifiers for type members if you don't specify an access modifier the default will be private for types if you don't specify an access modifier the default will be internal and you can see that on this slide so private is the default for type members whereas internal is the default for types okay and if you're not sure about the other access modifiers you know private protected and protected internal we have already covered that in the previous uh, session so please go check that session all right on this slide you can find some resources for ASP.NET and C sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day